I had previously sown peas early in the season with the hopes of getting them to the table sooner. A few weeks later, after a wetter than normal month of March, I had yet to see sprouts. I was getting worried. I had to investigate just what had happened. As shown in a previous video, I wanted to see if there was any advantage to pre-sprouting versus pre-soaking peas. Well, in this case, both had failed. After trying to find any vestige of growth, only a couple of half-rotten peas recovered from the earth gave clues to what had happened. Instead of getting discouraged, I got new seeds and repeated the experiment. I had used pea seeds that I had saved myself in the previous year. While they had germinated in the plate, mold had developed giving them a mottled appearance. I knew that was a bad sign, but decided to continue hoping for the best. The worst had already happened and now I had lost three precious growing weeks that could jeopardize pea production. I prepared both the pre-sprouted and pre-soaked peas to get them planted, this time using store-bought seeds. When seedlings sprout in borrowed ground, waiting for springtime to come around, dream seeds remain over parched earth. The pre-sprouted seeds were showing much greater vigor than my last mold-infected batch. They had strong initial roots that promised stout plants. I could already start dreaming of an abundant, if late, harvest. And indeed, a few weeks later, they were sprouting, breaking soil. Nothing is more encouraging than seeing green shoots come up in spring. The pea plants were announcing themselves with their leaves, although this time they were not alone. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I had also sown radishes earlier. For some really odd reason, I always end up with lots of radish seeds and some other seeds I haven't used throughout the years. And I don't want to throw them out, I want to use them up. But the problem is, is that radish has to be sown directly. And it has to be sown every week or every two weeks. So you have a steady supply of it. You don't just get crowded with all this flood of radishes that you don't know how to use. So I'm gonna start them in the plate and make sure they germinate and then I'll put them directly in the ground. You cannot start them in cups because they're a root crop, it doesn't work. They need to be directly sown. So either you directly sow it or you pre-sprout it and plant it in the ground. I had sown them about a week before planting the second batch of peas. After checking the viability of the radish seeds with the plate germination method, the idea was to get a quick harvest of radishes before the peas, since radishes are such fast-growing vegetables. A couple of weeks later, the peas were sending up vines as weeds poked through the mulch to conquer their place in the sun. With warmer weather, there is always a risk of cold-loving plants, like peas, bolting prematurely, diminishing the harvest of pods so I made sure to keep competing plants at bay. This would give my late peas the greatest chance to produce a bounty for me. I could already visualize them growing and producing abundantly. They only needed a few more weeks. Coming up in the next block, what exactly happened to the peas? Were they successful? Did I get more than I bargained for? Right after this commercial. I have created several new original works of art from my garden and made them available for purchase on Etsy. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support the channel by purchasing a painting from my garden, please visit my Etsy shop. These are one of a kind pieces, so hurry! A few weeks later, as warmer weather inched its way into the forecast, the peas grew by leaps and bounds and needed to be staked. I'm gonna take a gamble with the peas. They're growing and they're growing to the sides of the, the boxes, but I don't like the way that they can hold on to the box and then I cannot move the box and it becomes hard to harvest. So I'm gonna actually take the boxes away because I have not seen groundhog damage yet. And then I'm gonna build 
a support. Now, knowing the eating patterns of my resident groundhog, I was setting myself up for disaster. But feeling bold and dreaming of a garden without these annoying fences and borders, I decided to build a teepee with sticks to let the peas climb freely, making harvesting easier. The peas were attaching themselves to the wire mesh already. Had I waited just a couple of weeks more, they would have irreversibly woven themselves into these cages. This was the right time to act. Before I could build a new support, I had to harvest the radish, which looked very plump. Had I waited much longer, they would lose tenderness, becoming woody and way too hot as they bolted. Of course, not all the radish grew to size. For some unknown reason, there's always a few plants that refuse to form a bulbous root, putting all their energy into larger leaves instead. When seedlings sprout in borrowed ground While I couldn't exactly say this was the strongest support, it had its charm. Besides, it was free. With harvest at hand and peas supported, I went into the kitchen to try to use the radishes in a different way. Maybe pickled radishes would be the recipe of the day. I washed them carefully to remove all of the dirt and carefully sliced them. to get very thin slices, paper thin if possible. Ideally, so thin as to be translucent. There's nothing quite as refreshing and crunchy as biting into freshly cut radishes. If you cut them thinly, for some reason, they become more palatable. To make this fast five hour pickle, or more precisely, a marinade, I put the radish slices into a glass container and added the juice of two limes. I added a generous pinch of salt as well as some curry powder to give this pickle exotic flair. Once mixed, I put it into a fridge and let it sit for at least 5 hours. Once done, the radish slices become bright red pink. They develop a great flavor and are really nice additions to a salad or as a garnish. Now, what exactly happened to my pea experiment? A few weeks later, the pea plants were pumping out pods, and actually, I couldn't see much difference between the plants that had pre-sprouted in the plate versus the ones I had just pre-soaked. I thought that pre-sprouting would give them a jump start, but that is not what the evidence showed me. Perhaps because I had to plant them later on in the season after the first batch had failed, the soil temperature of the pre-soaked peas was probably comparable to the pre-sprouted plate environment, because it was warmer. Maybe I had to do this in colder weather to see a difference. Also, 
I would need to do a control group of seeds that were just directly sown without pre-soaking or pre-sprouting. But alas, I was happy with the harvest I got. Even after failure, there was hope. It taught me one thing. It is never too late to start. It is never too late to start dreaming.